Hello, I'm Dr. Jeff Kanings, Director of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Stewardship of our state's fish and wildlife resources is a big job, even for an agency like ours, with a staff of professional biologists and resource managers located throughout the state. That's why I look to citizen volunteers as key partners of this important work. Each year, Washingtonians contribute thousands of hours of their time and effort to projects ranging from stream restoration to monitoring deer and elk populations. Costs of these volunteer projects are funded through the Aquatic Lands Enhancement Account, otherwise known as ALEA. This video will give you an idea of what volunteers can accomplish with the kind of support provided through the ALEA program. This agency and the fish and wildlife populations we manage are better off today because of the involvement of people that care enough to partner with the Department of Fish and Wildlife. I hope you enjoy the presentation and thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin Feltis and I'll be narrating this presentation for you. Our hope is that after watching this video, you'll have a better understanding of WDFW's volunteer grant program and perhaps become one of our partners. Through this volunteer program, citizens throughout our state can compete for funding that supports projects that are beneficial to fish and wildlife and that rely on volunteer labor and their expertise. This program is authorized by Chapter 77100 RCW. WDFW receives $2 million of biennium dedicated from the legislature from the Aquatic Lands Enhancement Account to support this grants program. Generally speaking, there are five major project types undertaken by volunteers. However, we are also open to considering other types of projects if an applicant can make a persuasive argument that such an activity will benefit fish and wildlife, provide additional public opportunity, or satisfy a public need. Habitat projects include activities to restore and or preserve the life-sustaining conditions for fish, game, and non-game wildlife species. Research projects include activities with the goal of increasing our knowledge of fish and wildlife species, their numbers, distribution, habits, and movements. Education projects are those volunteer activities which have the goal of communicating information and experience which will enhance public understanding of natural processes affecting fish and wildlife. Facility development projects are those which will enhance access to fish and wildlife recreation and the development of additional capacity for rearing salmon, trout, and warm water species which will then become available for recreational and commercial use. Artificial production projects have the goal of rearing and releasing fish or wildlife for the use and enjoyment of the public. Applications for projects are accepted each year during the annual application period of January 2 through March 31. Awarded projects are funded either for a one or a two year time period. Cooperative projects draw from the inspiration and strength of volunteers. The ingenuity and hard work of Washington's volunteers have resulted in some memorable achievements. Here's a snapshot of some of our partners and their projects in action. Okay, what we're doing is environmental explorations and what this whole thing is about is wild salmon ecosystems and the interconnectedness of everything in a wild salmon ecosystem. So what we have here today are about 40 some presenters that have come from several different agencies. Some of them are from different groups such as like Audubon Society, Wild Birds Unlimited, um, Kitsap Stream Team, Mason County Conservation District. Um, We've got uh, Noah, just to name a few. We've got also Reptile Man is here. We have raptors down below. Um, we've got a bat exhibit going on. So all of these different presentations are to show how there's an interconnectedness in the salmon ecosystem. We feel it's really important to impart that knowledge off to youth. And um, as they grow, they become stewards of their environment. And so by seeing all the things that people are passionate about and that they have you know, dedicated their lives to and it gives them an idea of things maybe they can do as a career choice um, down the road. So not only to instill a stewardship value in them, but also as a career option of things that they may be interested in doing at some point in their own life. We've got about 60 volunteers working this event today in total with presenters, people that are actually just helping to staff, um, and with the AmeriCorps team, which is um, a volunteer organization as well. So yeah, right around 60. It's the first time in 14 years of this program going on, and we have got rain today, horrendous weather, but you know, everybody is um, very chipper about it. 
Aaliyah funds completely support this project from everything from the busing and getting the students here. We've got um, five school districts that are participating. Um, 900 students come to this particular day. So Aaliyah pays for all of it. Um, pays for um, food for the volunteers, the presenters, um, helps to get um, materials that we need for stations. Gosh, some of these displays we've got like with the 24-foot um, mural, that was definitely paid with Aaliyah funds. Um, T-shirts that everybody has for environmental explorations is paid through Aaliyah. So really, there is no component of this that is not funded through the Aaliyah program, and we really want funding. <laughs> so continue the program, it's very important. <laughs>
And we hope by the end of June that we have uh, the second bricks that we're working on now completed. We've got to date over 4,000 logged man hours uh, volunteer time in on this by all these different uh, individuals. So we've had uh, three of the schools have made inquiries with youth groups. We've got uh, uh, scouts who are looking to use the, uh, the facilities. The uh, Quinault uh, Nation has used the facilities for, uh, for three weeks uh, while they were conducting a uh, elk study on the uh, reservation. The Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, has been in and out of here. They've had all site meetings here. It's very rewarding just to be able to know that, you know, that we've been able to uh, uh, provide a uh, facilities that's going to be able to, to uh, house and, and accommodate uh, a, a variety of different organizations. Okay, in 1979, Trout Unlimited and myself decided we'd try to rear some steelhead for releasing in the river all the natural run had pretty well been depleted so we started this in the fall of 1979 hopefully to build a run of steelhead back in the north fork of the Nawaka. Twelve years ago uh, we decided we would do some handicap fishing for the local handicap people and it's been a real success and today this will be our twelfth year that we have been doing this, and uh, the people that come out really enjoy this outside. The project was in 1979, the Fish and Wildlife says, we'll give you the fish, it's up to you to do the rest of it. And we worked on our, what money we could get from donations and stuff. Well, I think it was about five years later, uh, we were still doing it, and we talked to Fish and Wildlife, and they have been given us grants since that time to, to operate the pond, pay the electric bills and the feed and whatever maintenance has to be done. And it's been a real success. Uh, the people that uh, come out during uh, this week of fishing, which has now kind of gone into barrier-free fishing, uh, will have anywhere from uh, 50 to 75 total folks over uh, currently uh, four days of activity. Uh, generally, uh, the first day of our fishing are uh, special education kids, and they just have a great time out here. Uh, today, we've got uh, folks from uh, Woodland Estates and Chehalis West. Uh, on Wednesday, we'll have two groups uh, down here from Olympia, and on Thursday, we have uh, veterans from the hospital at American Lake uh, come down and enjoy a day of uh, fishing. Uh, and it's great, uh, not only recreation, uh, but all of the folks uh, who come down here say it's great therapy uh, for uh, the folks too, as well. And uh, it's also therapy, I think, for our chapter members who uh, <laughs> enjoy coming down here and uh, watching uh, all the people uh, catch a fish and how much they enjoy uh, being here catching a fish. facility, get uh, lots of support from the staff at the uh, Aberdeen Hatchery, uh, and they seem to be pleased with the outcome of, of what we've done also. So I feel it's been a success over the years, and with the help of the Fish and Wildlife, we're still going. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation on the ALEA program. If you would like more information on how to become an ALEA partner, please contact us at 360 902-2700 or at our website at www.wdfw.wa.gov. Thank you for your support.